how it works. Because uh, it is quite a complex piece of software if you look at it from the outside in because it's got all these buttons. It's, you know, if we get into an actual project, it's got these templates and then there's all this stuff and then you open that and there's all this stuff and there's apps and analytics and layers and geometries and bits down here and you go, oh my goodness, it's kind of overwhelming. But if you look at it from the inside out, it's actually not that complicated. A little bit complicated, but not crazy complicated, especially for a sort of mathematically minded person, especially for someone who, like many architects, designers, developers are, who, who thinks about the world a bit left-brained. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with drawing. So in giraffe, you have geometries. Geometries are just polygons, really. So coordinates, x, y, x, y, x, y, and you just link them up. And those polygons can have properties. And then the giraffe engine takes the raw polygon, the flat polygon, and it creates a building out of that. So the giraffe engine actually builds the building. The user just has to control the polygon. But it's a two-step. It's a two-step. It's not like you draw the polygon and then add the properties straight to it. We have this thing called a usage. And you can collect all these properties in the usage, which is not a geometry. And then if you reference the usage by name on the geometry, what Giraffe does is it grabs all the properties in the usage and joins it to the geometry. So in this example, the only two properties I put on this geometry is the usage and the levels. But the Giraffe engine sees efficiency and floor to floor and color. And that's because all of those properties are stored on the usage. Now, why do we do that? It's like, what is the, what, what's a usage? Why is it so abstract? The reason is you can control the color or the efficiency or the floor to floor of all the residential in your project just by changing the usage and then everything updates, which is very powerful. So you're separating assumption data from geometry. And there's a few more subtleties in the giraffe engine. If I was to put an efficiency property on the geometry, like an override, say I wanted this one to have an efficiency of 90, then it would still get the color and the floor to floor from the usage, but the efficiency would override. And so you get this very fine grained control by breaking the data model of giraffe into these two pieces, the geometry and the usage. So let's actually just show you how that works. So first let's draw a geometry, there it is, it's gray. There it is, raw geometry it's got it's got some properties a layer id whether it's public a whole bunch of sort of giraffe stuff but it's got no usage uh it's got no color and so we don't actually need a, a usage you can see it's not being reported as a building because it doesn't have an area giraffe doesn't think it's an area but if we start adding stuff to it like levels and color and floor to floor we're eventually going to get to the point where uh, it thinks it is a building. There's a, a secret property which Giraffe needs, which is type. Building section. And as soon as you have that, Giraffe now goes, oh yeah, this is in fact a building, right? So we've not assigned a usage there. It has no usage. If we look at the, uh, the evaluated or the raw, there is no usage. Okay, but Giraffe is now adding it because there's efficiencies that it's making up and what we've got is a geometry. It's the line made up of these coordinates with these properties driving the analytics. But it's much easier to do this and then say, I'm gonna apply the residential usage. And when I do that, suddenly this thing goes yellow. And that's because the residential usage has this yellow color. So this geometry doesn't have the yellow color, the usage has the color. And then, like you see here, they, con they connect the yellow in our example, comes down and uh, colors the building. And so what that means is if I have many residential towers and I change the residential color to light blue, like it is in the example and I hit save, they all go light blue together. And this guy doesn't go light blue because he's got his properties on him, right? 
And so there's the power. So I can now change the floor to floor of all my residential in one hit. And I can see all my assumptions in one hit because they're not, they're not assigned to geometries. So that's the first sort of philosophical thing that the giraffe engine does, which is complicated, which is weird, but it is powerful. As in, there's a very good reason we made that design decision. It gives the user a huge amount of power. All right, so let's do the next thing. Right, the next thing Giraffe has is these layers. Now, these layers are just GIS layers. This is a very well-known paradigm metaphor. These things on the left, these are called layers because they layer up on top of each other. So this 3D buildings is layered up on a base map. These map layers are layered up. Everything's layered up like a lasagna, like they stack on top of each other. Um, that's what they're called layers, I think. And each of these geometries, and this is a layer geometry, it's not editable, but it still has a shape. It's still a polygon. If I right click on it, it comes with metadata. And so Giraffe allows you to look at the layer as a geometry, but a Giraffe also allows you to look at the layer as a table of metadata. So kind of a similar concept, you know, it's geometries plus properties. This is geometries plus properties in the layers. In these layers, each geometry has its own property. So if I right click on this, those are the properties of this building. There's no join, there's no usage table kind of floating off to the side to make this triangular relationship. It's just a properties and geometry. So it's just ge geometry and properties. There's no, there's no floating collection, which we call usage that gets joined together. There's no engine, but it is similar. And the reason why is giraffe based on layers, that's just GIS. That's such a mature ecosystem, such a mature paradigm and way of looking at data. Uh, and, so, and it's mature because it's excellent. It works really well. Okay, so now I've already alluded to this, that once you have these geometries and these properties, you can start getting analytics out of them. And the way that works is that we let you define the analytic, like the output you want, um, as an equation mathematically and then we summarize it and print it out and all it is is the geometric properties which are inherent in the geometry so this rectangle has an area you can't see what the area is you know it's, it's a times it's like you know it's length times it's breadth or, or you break it down into triangles and work it out um, but then if you wanted a net area you wanted to factor that area by some property right 80% on the efficiency property here, you just grab those two, the area and the efficiency, you multiply them together and you report them. And that's all Giraffe's doing. So it's linking an output, an analytic or a representation or a summary to some inputs. And those inputs are the geometries and the geometries properties, right? Analytics doesn't know about the usage except indirectly. Analytics gets this bit, the kind of the joined up bit. So not the separate bits, it, it just gets the geometries and the properties. It doesn't know that this, this, what we call baked section, this sort of cooked section has gone through this process of being cooked. It just thinks that this building has these properties. So it's very, very simple. This building is just one thing. And so in Giraffe, if we come to the analytics, we start with a blank slate. Summaries. And I create a, an analytic here, net area. I can grab all the properties in my model and the key ones here are these areas. So I'm gonna grab the area and I'm gonna grab the efficiency. And I'm gonna multiply those together. And the unit I'm gonna use is square meters. And I'm gonna save. And so now what this does is this just goes through the model and for every single element in the, in the model, it, sum, it multiplies the area by the um, efficiency. And then it adds them all together. The reason it adds them all together is because the operation is sum. So we could say average, minimum, maximum, count. And so the efficiency property 
which is stored here. If I was to change that to zero and hit save, that number changed over there. And that's because what analytics sees is the joined properties, this evaluated, so all of the properties that come from the usage, the floating table and the geometry, and it just sees them all connected and then it just works on those. So analytics and usages are connected, but indirectly. One could sort of say, one could sort of say it actually kind of works like this, where you could, if I ungroup that as well, the analytic report is coming out of this. So this joined thing goes to the analytic report. So that's the actual flow. The user draws geometry, applies some properties to the geometry. The usage properties are then connected via this usage key, right? If it says residential, we'll grab these. If it says retail, it'll grab those. Those are added. This giraffe does this bit. And then giraffe then works on these to do the analytics. And it's all happening on top of these GIS layers, these layers. Right, and then the final thing that the giraffe engine does is the flow. So what we can do is instead of just modifying the properties of the geometry via the usage table, like I can modify all my residential color by coming to the usage table and changing the color like I did before, we can actually modify the geometries directly using the computer. So I can grab this geometry and I can grow it. Okay, and all this is doing is it's taking the original feature, feature is another word for geometry, and I'm growing it by five meters, and then I'm writing it out. So in it comes, this offset grows it, and the offset pushes out the grown feature. And if I grow it by a negative amount, it shrinks. And of course, we have far more complex transformations than that or functions than that. So I'm using the word transformational function to mean this, this thing that takes a geometry and transforms it and gives out the transformed geometry. The reason you call it a function is because it does something. It's a verb. It takes something, shrinks it, and gives you the shrunken one back. And then analytics sees the output. So as I grow this thing, the net area is increasing or the gross area is increasing and increasing. Another reason it's not changing is efficiency is zero. There we go. And that's basically how the core ideas in Giraffe work. And if you sort of get your head around those, if you understand that data flow and those hierarchies, the usages as a table, usage key relating to that table, connecting all the properties to the geometry, then going to analytics where it's summing things over, sitting on top of layers, being modified by flows, you're in a very good position to understand what giraffe's doing and why it's doing it. And then what you'll find is if you get that core journey, everything else kind of starts to make sense, why there are buttons in the way they are, and you'll begin intuiting possibilities. And then the final thing is that in Giraffe, everything sits inside a portfolio. So this group of geometries is in a project which I haven't yet saved. And if I go and click on my home button, I can see all my projects. And the projects themselves have metadata on them and actually are represented as geospatial polygons. So they're another kind of polygon with another kind of metadata and metadata or properties. So it's kind of like one of those snakes that eats its own tail. A giraffe project is just a geometry with properties. Inside the giraffe project is just ge uh, geometries with more properties. 
some of those properties bring even more properties through the usage table of properties and then the analytics reads those and that's the way the giraffe system works <laughs>